I hope you all have a wonderful week. Today, we continue our message in Paul's letter to Galatians. The book of Galatians exhausts these two things. The cross of Christ as the only way a person can get right with God. And the spirit of Christ as the only way a person can obey God. Chapter 6 is composed entirely of a loving exhortations and the expression of apostles' earnest concern in the behalf of the Christian in Galatia. So in today's message, he exhorts them to bring back the ones whoever had led to sin, and to bear one another's burdens, and thus to show that they would the true friend of Jesus, and governed by his law. Two questions will be addressed in today's message. First, why should we restore that person who is caught in sin as brothers and sisters? Why? Second, how do we do it? So the first question, why should we restore the person who is caught in sin? We can look at this question in two aspects. The first one is because we are what? Brothers and sisters. Where is my you didn't size? Tell me what? It was. <laughs> what? You took the flash drive. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, because we are children, the sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father, the first reason, the first aspect is because all Christians, brothers and sisters, we are called brothers and sisters because we are all children of our Heavenly Fathers. What does it mean as brothers and sisters in Christ? Let's see. Uh, okay. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. So since all Christians are children of God, that makes us brothers and sisters, we all have the same Father and are spiritually related to, with each other. And we are encouraged in the Bible to continue to be close with our blood relatives as well as with our new spiritually, spiritual family. So if we read... What John says, if someone says, I love God and hate his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love the father who has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. And whoever believes in Jesus in Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves him who begot also loves him who is begotten of him. So we are encouraged in the Bible and even the commandment, we have to love each other. We have to love each other. So let's stay here for a while. Let's think about being brothers and sisters of families, members. Now I want you to imagine the ones who you consider the, are the loved ones in your life. Who are the ones you consider those guys, those persons, are the ones I love. And then think about what kind of things you want to do with them. What I can imagine is a lot. If I like someone, I love someone, first I want to be with them. 
I enjoy the time spending with them. And uh, I am very patient. Right? I am very patient. And I want them to be happy for the one we love. And uh, also, I will try to protect them. I, would, I don't want them to get hurt. Physically, if one of the families, my wife, children get hurt, or have get ill, I care so much. I have to do something to protect them or get killed. It's the same thing. I will try my best to keep them out of danger. So that is a physical. Think about that. Spiritually. It's the same thing. The reason we have family, we call parents guardian, right? Guardians is what? To guide. The person who guide. Guard, not guide. And also guide, right? The both. The reason for that, for what? Is to protect, to make sure the children will go along the right way. Protect them from being hurt. So spiritually, we try to also protect the one we love. If we have that commandment from Bible, say we're going to love our brothers and sisters. If a brother's sin is caught in sin, what the sin can lead to? The sin lead to death. That is how serious it is. That's how serious we have to consider. When we deal with the spiritually weakness, spiritually corruption in our in the one we love, that's a big concern. Probably more than the way we care about the physical. So from this sense, we have to take care of the sin from our brothers and sisters. Just like the parents care about the children. If the children have problem or doing something wrong, have bad habit, what do we do? We do our best to stop it. Because we know that's going to hurt it. Right? It's the same thing for brothers and sisters. This is from the view of consider the people in the church are brothers and sisters because we are the family. And another way to think about this question is to imagine the church as a body. And the brothers and sisters are the part of one body. And in Corinthians, describe the church like this, just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts from one body, so is it with Christ. For we are all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jewish or Gentile, slave or free, and we are all given the one spirit to drink. And even though the body is not made of one part, but of many, so we are all parts of one body. Our bodies are amazing creation. Our body. When we have a problem in one part of the body, the rest of the body suffers a lot. If you have one part of your body. Have you ever been in danger? So, so it, 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 it is my have been something as small as a eyelash get into your eye, right? If you get bothered here, get something inside of your eyes, I don't know how, what is your response. So whenever there is an injury in the body, the body responds to the injury. The whole body, a backache, it affects everywhere if you have a backache. You might be slamming your finger in a car ball. Ow! 
when that happens, what are you going to do? You jump or whatever, scream, whatever you can do, right? Even though only part of your body being hurt. And so it is in the body of Christ. So it is in the body of Christ. The one, one member is injured, the rest of the body is to respond to that member. In Romans chapter 12 says, Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. In Corinthians said, And whether one member suffer, all members suffer with it. All one member is be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Do you guys have this feeling? If in the one fellowship, if there's one family or one person in that fellowship, all people around us from the church, he or she has something not comfortable or complaining, do you feel the burden on it? You don't feel comfortable, right? <coughs> So that's how we feel with each other because God is a commandment one and also what he had done to bring us together into one body and we do can feel because the same spirit speaks to us. The same spirit. Otherwise we don't have peace. If that thing is not settled down, we're going to keep get stirred by it. So when a believer gets out of a step with the Lord and falls into sin, they may feel like it is their private business. But that sin hinders the work of God for the whole body of Christ. Unconfessed and unforgiven sin in the life of the child of God hinders and quenches the Holy Spirit and causes the power and the conviction, conviction of God to be muted. So when there is something now settled within the church, the church loses power. The church loses power. So since this is true, whenever there is an injury to one of our members, it affects the whole body of Christ. It's just like a acute conditions in the physical bodies as the same problem in the body of Christ must be handled quickly and decisively you don't wait you have to do it very very quickly it is a painful but necessary procedure we have to do it the body of the Christ is the same thing and we as Christians, as brothers and sisters, and the parts of the body has to be reminded the importance of our roles in healing a broken body of the Christ. And something that we cannot stay away and have to deal with very carefully. So from these two aspects, one is from the fact that we become a family. The second Consider we are parts of the body. Then I hope I convinced you that we have to help with each other if anyone is caught in sin. But then how do we do it? How do we do it? Actually, in these two verses, there is some teaching there. Let's, let's, let's take a look at it. Let's see how, how, how talks about the process of setting things right with the body of Christ. The first thing what we look at is if someone is caught in a sin, when you read this, what do you what do you got? Someone is caught in sin. It means the sin is exposed or caught. When you talk about the cut, it's a kind of, what do you, what do you, uh, the first, uh, first thing on a criminal, right? Jump out, when, what do we talk about the cut? We cut, we 
catch the criminals. And one thing is called something like the criminal is caught on the scene. What is happening? Okay. It means there is nothing to deny. It's being exposed. Everyone knows. But why is caught? It's versus to the ones not caught. So it indicates there's something of the scene not caught. So the scene cannot be hidden. Why is that? Because it's to its point. It's over the threshold of what is to be hidden. Scene is a progressive. It's progressive. It's nearly always start from small, but it's never stay as small. We don't see them at the beginning, but very often it's too late once we find them. And eventually we have to get rid of the whole thing. It's always grow like something awful cancer until it consumes our life. If we don't stop it or treat it, it will eventually, eventually kill us. Let's think about something like the what is the most bothered you guys? One thing in my life, constantly from when I was very young, keep bothering me is my teeth. Is my teeth. Every time I went to see the dental, the doctor, I get problems. Either there's a hole, either there's a decay, you know, or you have to deal with something until now. But you don't see those things at the beginning. You don't see those things at the beginning. But to a point when you feel it, when you can feel it, already to a certain damage. That is the place where it's being caught. Then you can caught with something wrong. But very often, there is no such thing you can easily detect. Easily detect it. So you have to pay attention. So when we think about the, the nature of sin, the nature of those corruptions, we have to realize that it is there. We just, we just don't realize that. Or we think, or we cannot see it. Okay, we cannot see it. So that's why when we consider this, we have to be we have to be alerted and prepared. So when we look at each other, we have to have a mind. There is something within every one of us. There is something we need to be alerted and reminded. Reminded, we know there's always a possibility in our life, even a Christian, we have chance to get tempted and to fall into sin. So the first situation is the sin is caught. Okay, the sin is caught. To a point it has to be has to be what? Has to be exposed. People cannot, you know, even the person who seen, he cannot hold it anymore. That's why it's been caught, caught. So in that case, that requires us to help a person or to prevent such thing happen. We have to be closely related to, to each other. We have to have a good fellowship with each other. If I don't know this person, the person who around us, how can I help them with something hide in their life? So that really requires to be consistently pray for each other, communicate with each other, and try to protect each other. And remind everything, if there's any sign, there, then what we should do? We should do it. We should remind. 
not wait until the end. I think this happens a lot in our life. If you look around, everyone get pretty good in judgmental things, right? We all like to judge people when we look around. Some of them are right because those are direct impressions. Okay, but we have to be very careful on this. We don't judge people randomly, but we have to take inside of, okay, is there anything wrong? Because when we read people, read people's life, we can see the sign. What does the sign mean? Some impression, something, okay, either right or not. But the sign, there is an indication in each of the sign, something underneath. And we try to make it accurate, so we pray for them, we can get more interact with them, and we try to get everything is right. Okay, what is the next one? The next one, so you need to do who, if someone is caught in a thing, you who live by the Spirit should respond to that person. Here is a condition. Who? Who are the you? The person who lives in spirit. It must be a person who in the spirit. Why is that? Why is that? What, what does spirit help us? When we have, what, what do we call a person living in spirit? We can see the fruit of spirit, right? Not coconut, not the apple, not the... It's a fruit of spirit. You can see those things. Okay. Although we are all baptized, or we are all claimed to be Christian, it's often we are not spiritually mature. It's very often. We don't see some of the Christians, the, you don't see the fruit there, do we? That very often we're so disappointed because, you know, oh, that person, is that person a Christian? If he is, then I, I don't want to be. Something like that. Okay, this happened. That's why Paul led us to grow spiritually, to get sanctified, sanctified. Why do we need, need spirit? Sean? Why do we need a spirit? I saw you know. What happened to your tools? Okay. So let's think about it. Listen. So the reason we need a spirit, why we need a spirit, why to be, why need to be mature enough? Because it is a tough job to do. Okay? You remember it. It is a tough job, very tough job, to remind anyone or try to correct anyone. Why is that? Because it's really tough. I think God is very mercy to, to ask us to take care of ourselves first. If we take care of others first, you know, everything is going to be good. So let's recall in your life, any moment you try to convince someone you are wrong, I am right. Or I should help you with a very sincere heart. What is the result? That could happen in couples. Wife and husband. We, we, we often try to, okay, you know, probably do this better or the other. And it happens between parents and children. And it happens between church co co-workers, right? So when we, when we try to, to uh, have some moments on those things in our life, what is your experience? Is this very successful? Is it very being appreciated? Or what is it? Or frustration? Very often you see when people try to argue or try to set anything right with what they thought to be 
and end up with what? With fight. With fight. If you don't have a spirit, or you don't have a mature spiritual life, when you try to convince anyone, what is the cause going to, or the result going to lead to yourself? Very often is what? It's angry, hatred, frustration. So you can see how uh, how how it, it is difficult. That's why, however, what is the spirit going to bring us? What is the fruit of spirit? The spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness. That is what we need to do this kind of job. If you are not patient enough, you are not, if you are not loving enough, how can you do this job? Immediately you're going to be, become angry and that's why you have to be very careful when you do this. So all, you also may be tempted. Tempted by the pride. Because I'm Right, you are wrong. However, you don't listen to me. What's going on? This has happened between parents and the children, I think, is a lot. Even the parents are right. But because they don't have enough patience, they don't have enough fruit, it ends up with what? Five, misunderstanding, frustration, depression, a lot of things. So that's why we have to be what? Spirit. Spiritual person. When we try to help a person who is caught in sin. And what is the last of sins? So we have to carry the burdens. The carrier's burdens. So in this process, the spiritual Christians are commanded to carry or to help carry burdens of those who have fallen. What, what, what are we discussing? So there is something you have to help because I don't want to disrupt them. And if there's something not right, if they continue to do this, it's going to be very harmful to the church. Whoever comes to this congregation to worship God, Something like this happened, we don't allow. That's why I have to stop here to remind the person. But do you see I'm very angry now? That's a temptation. It's tempted. It's not easy. I hope I can be very gentle, but I cannot. You see how difficult it is to deal with something wrong. So that's the hard work we all need to learn. We all need to learn how to deal with. Okay. So where am I? We have a picture here, yes. A injured body part being unable to bear the load it normally would. That's why we all need to bear the bear the burden the person had. When we are in injured, the entire body helps to compensate for the weakness of the injured part. Imagine if our back is ache, what we do? We use our hands, right? Try to do something, support. Normally we would do that, wouldn't do that. And then what is the, and it says, well, it will fulfill the law of Christ. What is the law of Christ? It's the law of love. It's the law of love. And it has been exampled the best in Jesus' life. 
And he said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find the rest of your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That is what Jesus teaching. And that is what he did. And the law of Christ is not easy. Because it's, it's very per permissive. It's not rigid. Like, you don't do this, you don't do that. Right? But if someone says, okay, you need to love. It's a very permissive. It's not a rigid, clear. Very often we like to say, okay, what do we eat now today? Give me a list, then we do. But now it's kind of very difficult. And sometimes we don't have idea how we should work on it. How we should use this law. However, it is also easy. Because it is easy when we are weak. He is strong. It is easy because he produced the fruit of love. It's not us. And the Christ never commands us to do anything that he wants us to do on our own. He never what he wants us to be, to be with him. That what, what is the verse I just read? Come to me. Come to me. I'll share your burden. See, I'll share your burden. So Christ never commands us to do anything that he wants us to do on our own. Therefore, every command in the law of Christ is the call to faith. Because we need the faith to have him be with us. So through faith, God supplied the Spirit of Christ. Through the Spirit, we produce the fruit of love. And through love, we fulfill the law of Christ. So therefore, if you trust, trust Him, He will fulfill His law of love. And you will devote yourself to lifting the burdens of the others. So we lift the others' burden by what? By bringing them to Jesus, by the power of Jesus, by the love from Christ. It's not on our own. So in this life, we will never be more like Jesus than we are when we are actively seeking to restore fallen sin, fallen sin, sin back to the place of where being in the law. In other words, there's nothing more important in our life than to try to find someone and restore their failures and life to be right with Jesus. And this is, a, this is all the things Jesus has done when he in this world. In the next season, we're going to talk about the event of Jesus, of the Christ. We're going to see what he has done in the world. In Genesis chapter 4 tells the story of Cain and Abel, who are Adam and Eva's son. Abel kept the flocks, and Cain worked in the soil. Cain brought some of the fruit of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought the portion, the fat portion, from some of the firstborn of his flocks as an offering. And the Lord favored Abel's. And the king got angry and he killed Abel. And then the Lord said to him, Where is your brother Abel? Where is your brother Abel? What Cain said. Am I my brother's keeper? Am I my brother's keeper? So that's that's why you think about are we our brother's keepers? 
The answer is quite clear. We are. We are. So, when author write his application to the uh, college, we had a discussion on the struggle. Because one of the questions is, what is the most struggle thing in your life when you are as a teen? And he lists a bunch of them, personal struggles, peer pressures, finding identities and the purpose of life. But when I look at those things, what in my mind is the most difficult thing for my life is to put the person around me in the right way with Jesus. That including my wife, myself, my sons and daughters. Because that is the most difficult thing. Imagine what is the best you want to give the one you beloved. What, what is the most valuable thing you want them to have? It's the way to live. It's more important even than life. A meaningless life. A life without purpose. So when I think about this, it's really feel, feel, uh, feel a kind of uh, sorry or, or not, uh, you know, being, being uh, because even the person around us in the family, we sometimes we, we cannot fulfill the law of Jesus. We cannot lead them or provide the spiritual need. And then to the people around us in the church, even more challenge. Because we are so weak. When we try to touch anything on this, try to bring up any concerns of the brothers or sisters around us, we just don't have any idea what we can do with it. The only thing we can do with probably the best is prayer. But what I want to tell you, for me, if I see something, but normally I don't want to directly confront them, I will not directly go to them. But I'm prepared. I'm waiting for the moment someday the person can come to me, ask for help or advice. So that is something can make our prayer meaningful. When we pray for someone, we have a long-lasting long-lasting relationship in our inside of us. Not only a mouthpiece just saying at the moment, then, then forget. So when you are ready in your heart, whenever there is a chance, bring it up. Because if we just go to someone, we don't have, I don't have that courage. So, for today's message, I hope everyone can get some reflection on this. Because it's, it's the ultimate, it is the ultimate law in the whole world. If someone cares about your spiritual life, or someone can help you with your spiritual failure or burden. Am I my brother's keeper? You need to find where is your brother. Who are those ones? You're going to realize you owe a lot to the person God put around us. Because we, we hardly can handle ourselves. So, there's a lot we need to do and we need to learn. And we need to pray. Okay, that's all for today's night. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this morning and have a reflection on the word you teach us. Let us remind ourselves that such a big challenge and opportunity for us to help our brothers and sisters. And in a way that we have to equip ourselves, make ourselves right with you. 
and uh, hopefully the church here, the brothers here and the sisters here can be a the best testimony for your love, for the fulfillment of your love in this community and in the people around us. Speak to us. Let us know we are the keepers of fathers, uh, of our brothers. If we fail into that, we need to we need to catch up. Pray in Jesus' name.